All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new video series. Um, in this video series, I want to talk about the entire process uh, in creating a set of as-built plans, okay? So a set of as-built plans, and by the way, I apologize for not putting up any videos over the holidays, but I just wanted to take a little bit of a break. I was shooting a lot of videos. Um, so anyways, a set of as-built is, you know, let's say you work for an architect's office, or you're in college, one of the first things they might ask you to do is to go out and measure um, a house that they're gonna end up putting an addition on, you know, whether they're gonna go up or out. Um, but you need to have the original set of plans first because the town doesn't always have that. And even if the town did have it, you need a digital copy of those plans. So one of the first things that your, you know, your architect or uh, whoever you're working for might ask you is to go out and create a set of as-builts, okay? so this first video is going to be about the process of the as built and what you would have to do and each video after this we'll talk about um, you know each step of the way and what you have to create and what you have to measure and, and how you actually create it okay so you know the, here's the process and this is going to be a short video this first one um, the process is and you would still have to do this before you want to do any design work either you know to add that uh, to add that addition you would need to have the as built okay so um, you need accurate measurements, all right? We need to know exactly the size of every room, the exterior measurements, the interior measurements, the doors, the windows, uh, the bathroom, where the tub is, how big it is. You know, you need to know everything about this house and you need to make an accurate plan. That way you can build on top of that, okay? So the first step, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a, a piece of uh, graphing paper, okay? or if you're lucky enough to work in an architect's office, they might give you a little pad um, that they have that has graphing paper on it. But I don't know if that you can see that, that's graphing paper, It's I think it's one quarter by one quarter boxes, um, which is a good size for what we're trying to do, okay? You'll survey the house first, you'll walk around the outside, you know, and, and actually even before you get to the site, I would go to Google Maps and I would look up the street view of the house to get an idea of what the house looks like um, from the street before you even get there. You can move the camera up and down the road to see the sides. You can also do a Google aerial view to get an idea of the roof and the roof plan. So that's going to help you later on because if you can see all the ridges on the roof from Google Maps, um, it'll be a lot less work when you go to figure out what that roof line looks like and all the different dormers or whatever the house has on it. Okay, the ups and downs of your, you know, and the ins and outs of all your roof and that plan. Okay. So you're gonna walk around the outside of the house, okay? And you're gonna measure, uh, sorry, you're going to draw the actual shape of the house. This does not have to be to scale, but it helps if it is, okay? So, whoops. Okay, so as you're walking around the outside of the house, you might see, and I'm gonna hold this paper up in a second, you might see a bump out you might see a bump in, you might see a bump out, and we're talking about the first story, you know, the first floor here. Let's just assume that this house does not have a second floor yet. Um, you know, you're gonna draw it back, maybe it kicks in a little bit, maybe it kicks back out for like a back addition that's already there. Kicks over, kicks in. Goes out, and then connects around the side. So let's say this is the front and this is the rear and you get something like this. Okay. So you need to figure out what the ins and outs of the house is. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape measure and you're going to go around and you're going to measure all of those different lengths. Let's say it's, you know, I don't know. Let's say this is uh, I'm going to make up numbers here. 12 feet. I would have loved to do this video like out in the field, but I just don't know how I would do that with my equipment and, and a camera. I'd probably have to use a cell phone. Um, let's say it's 12 feet, 8 feet, 16 feet, 4 feet, 12 feet again. So that gives us an overall of, of 40 feet. So we've got a house that's 40 feet wide. And then going back, let's say we've got 30 feet, it bumps in by two feet. It goes out by, um, let's say 16 feet. 
let's just say this back piece is a square 16 by 16 and then that gets us to 18 and if this is going to be 40 that means we have 2 30 oh, we got to get to 40 so 2 22 so we'd have 22 feet and then um, let's see that's 4 8 so that you're gonna have 34 feet on the left side of the house okay so you get something like this okay so now looking at this I already know that this is gonna be a front dormer here this is gonna be a front dormer like this that runs into the main roof. The main roof is gonna have one big tall ridge here. These dormers are gonna die into that ridge. Uh, this one's also gonna have a dormer back here that goes like this. Just, you know, strictly talking about the roof plan and that's gonna run into the main roof and you're gonna have lines that draw back this way and lines that draw back that way, okay? So now you have your exterior measurements. This is very important to do. Um, and the process here is that you want to make sure that you're hooking that tape measure on the foundation. Okay, so you're going to need two tape measures. You, it's best to have like a 25 foot tape measure and to have like a real tape measure, which will give you, when I say real, I mean R-E-E-L, uh, which is like a 100 foot tape measure. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll hook that on the foundation around the outside of the house. If you can't hook it on the foundation because it's on a slab or, you know, for whatever reason there's bushes in the way, you can hook it to the siding and, you know, you just got to take some inches off. So let's say that you hook it from the corner piece of a siding to the corner piece of a far piece of siding um, and it comes out to be 16 feet, 16 feet 2, okay? Let's say that that corner piece is about an inch off the outside exterior wall on both sides. So you would take 2 inches away and you get your 16 feet. Now we say that when we measure this, we want to be to the closest quarter of an inch, okay? And it's difficult to do on such a big run, but make sure you pull that tape measure as tight as possible as you're getting those measurements. That way you can be as accurate as possible, okay? So you measure it, you write your numbers down. You measure the next bump, you write your numbers down. Anything less than like 16 feet, I'd probably use the tape measure for. Anything more than that, I'd probably use the real tape for, okay? Um, all right, so moving forward, the next thing you're going to do after you get those measurements is you're going to mark on the plan where the uh, porch is, where the deck is, where any, you know, those are going to lead up to your exterior door, but where all the stairs are, okay? So let's say that there are four steps to get into this house. get something like this you would now measure the width and length of the actual porch okay so we already have one of those numbers we have 16 feet and we have the other number eight feet so we don't have to do any measuring here because it ended up being even with the outside of the house if it's not even with the outside of the house then you're gonna want to do some measurements of a length and width for that porch okay Next step, you would do the length and width of how wide the stairs are, what the rise is. Let's say it's 8 inches for each one, 8, 16, uh, 24, and then up to the platform here would be, what, 32, 24 and 6, yep, 32. Um, and that would actually require a handrail because anything over 30 inches is going to give you, uh, is you're going to need to have a handrail on, so there should already be one there. So draw that handrail as well. Don't worry so much about getting specific numbers on the handrail because when you go to draw that, it's just going to look generic in the elevations and it's going to look pretty generic on the actual floor plan as well. Okay, it's more important to get the steps as accurate as possible. Um, another thing is you're looking at the grade of the house. Take note if the house, you know, the grade is like completely slumping to one side. You know, it's draw like let's say on the right side of the house, you can see two concrete cinder blocks and then the siding starts. And then on the left side of the house, you can see four blocks you know that that ground is grading down and you need to, to take that into consideration when you're doing your measurements, okay? So you go around, you do that, um, you get the width of the stairs, you get the height of each step and you get the, uh, the tread on each step as well. We need to know how far it is from this corner to this corner, maybe it's 10 inches and then 10 here and then 10 there. We need to know that stuff, okay? 
Um, take note of the overhang of the steps. If there are overhangs where you put your foot here and then you know the actual top part of the step there kind of bumps back out about an inch, we need to know that that's one inch, okay? Whatever that overhang is, all right? Um, so let's just assume that we do the same thing for the back deck. There's probably a back deck back here somewhere um, which may go further out than the house or it may go further you know, deep. It may wrap around and maybe a wrap around the side. You know, whatever it ends up being, you're gonna draw that and do the exact same thing. You're gonna get the width and height and uh, length of all the stairs and you know, where the deck is. Measure the deck, you know, give it the length, give it the width, write all that stuff down, okay? All right, next thing. Um, you're gonna go through, you're gonna, you're gonna stay outside and this is strictly for the actual elevations, okay? For the elevations, you need about two different, uh, let's say, you need three things, okay? You need to try to get the peak height from grade, okay? This is just a, a rough idea, or even from the bottom of the siding, you know, would be good too. Um, and, and also, before I forget, measure your siding reveal, which means that if you have your pieces of siding that are like, you know, it's one piece, but it looks like two, measure that one piece and figure out what that height is, okay? So let's say that's uh, eight inches or 12 inches or whatever it is. Later on, when you take pictures of all the exterior of the house from as many angles as possible, um, you'll be able to assume by adding up that reveal number how high certain things are, okay? Um, because you're going to need to know that. You can't always get your tape measure on everything out in the field. And, you know, adding up those things is going to help you to get your, you know, your roof, your pitch, things like that. It would be better if you could go in the attic and measure the pitch, okay? You can look at the roof rafters. Um, and you can measure like, okay, you know, every 12 inches, this rise is six inches. So then you know your pitch is 612. Um, so going back to what I was saying before, you would want to know the peak height of the, the large peaks. Okay. So like the dormer, if you can get it, uh, or the three dormers, if you can get it from, from the peak to the bottom of the siding or from the peak to the, you know, to the ground, to the grade, you know, that's important to know. Um, especially the side, the main roof, that's very important to know is what that peak height is, okay? Um, so what I do sometimes is I'll take my 25 foot tape measure and I'll just try to string it up as high as I can and hook onto that ridge and then pull it back down and measure it to the ground and then write that number down, okay? Um, and then the last thing you're gonna need on the exterior is you're gonna wanna have the soffit height, okay? So think about where your gutter is, you know, you've got your roof coming down You've got your fascia board and you've got your gutter outside of that. And then you've got underneath that is going to be your soffit that runs into the exterior wall of the house. Measure from the grade to the bottom of the soffit and get that height in all four corners of the house. You'll notice that these numbers are always different because nobody's grade is perfect. So you need to know that in order to get the grade the way that it is. Uh, if that grade slopes down all the way to the left by two extra blocks, your height might be an extra 16 inches. And that's important to know when you go to do your elevations later on. Okay. Um, so after that, you're moving inside. All right. When you move inside, you're doing the same exact thing. I'm not going to draw this one, but um, you're going to walk around first before you take any measurements and you're going to draw the exact plan of the house. So on that sheet of paper, you know, maybe this is a bedroom down here. You write and draw exactly where every wall is and where every closet door is and I'm going to show this in more detail in my future videos um, of that house and of that room okay and you do that in all the rooms you need to know the length and width of every room you need to know the head height of every door and every window how tall they are usually they're six eight but if you have like an uh an, an old school house uh it could be different if you're up in an attic it could be a different head height uh, some doors and windows are a seven foot head height or 610. You'll need to know what those are because that's going to help you for the elevations as well later on. So anytime you're doing an up measurement, that's helping you with the elevations later. Okay. Uh, you need to know the positions of all the doors and windows. So looking at my screen here, you know, you did your length and your width on the room, right there to there. You need to know the position of the window. Always measure off the exterior uh, off an exterior wall like this corner right here to the center of the window not from an interior wall to the center of the window always from an exterior 
and then that's going to get you to the center. You're going to want to know the size of that window. How wide is the window? How tall is the window? That's going to give you a rough idea of what that window should look like on your elevation and specifically on your floor plan, okay, and where it sits. Uh, this one I would measure from this corner, and you're standing inside this room. You're measuring from here to the center of this window, maybe to the center between the two windows if you have a double, or to the center of the second window as well. Get your head height, you know, figure out later on if you have a manual from like Anderson Windows or something like that, you can look up that size and get a rough idea of what the model number is of that window, TW26410. I know that that window by clicking on this one is two foot seven and three quarters by five feet and three quarters. That's a 26410, okay? So you'll know and that'll help you get your elevations, all right? Uh, we need to know the position of doors, and you're going to draw all of this. It's just going to be a rough draft, but you need to know, you know, where all these walls are. Maybe this is four inches. This is two foot six. Measure inside of here. That's like 12 or whatever, and then measure the depth of the closet. Maybe it's two foot one or something like that. Take note of two closets that are right side by side like this, where the second one will probably be the exact same size. Length and width of the room position of the door four inches two foot eight draw which way the door actually opens uh bifolds you know how big are these doors if these are 36 inches all the way across then these are going to be 8 16 32 we got 10 20 34 we're going to have nine inch doors here nine 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 um and you're going to draw that on there and write those numbers so this pad is going to get pretty, uh, pretty busy. So it helps to do different colors as well. If you've got a couple different color markers, that's going to help you. Maybe you could use a green marker for all the window measurements. Maybe you could use black for all the exterior measurements and the room measurements. You know, blue, whatever, what, for the doors, whatever you got to do. Okay. So that's, you know, pretty much it. You go around the outside of the house or the inside of the house. You measure all your length widths, get the position of all the doors and windows off of your exterior walls. Um, try to get an idea of what type of window it is or you know what type of door it is this is a two foot eight opening door and the head height is six eight okay it's a little bit easier to understand this than it is to understand this because this is an actual model number of a window where doors are a lot more standard there's only really you know ten different size doors where there could be a thousand different size windows okay uh, in the bathroom length and width as well what is the position of the toilet? Where is it in, in the room? And from the, the corner closest to there to the center of the toilet, what is that measurement to the center of the bowl? One foot four, okay? It can't be any less than one foot four, but it might be in an older house. One foot four is generally, you know, code. One foot six is nice. Um, what's the length and width of the shower? What's the length of this wall that comes out? You know, what's the width of the vanity uh, that's in the bathroom there, you know, with the sink? All of these things are very important to know. Um, the cabinets. Now, you don't have to get crazy with this. I like to get crazy with this when I'm in the field because it helps the drawing be more accurate. I like to know, okay, the dishwasher's here. You know, we've got an 18-inch cabinet. We've got a corner cabinet. We've got a 24-inch cabinet, whatever this is. Maybe that's a 30. 30-inch uh, 30 stove. 24 inch cabinet where the fridge is okay try to take rough measurements of all these things especially the peninsula and island that way you can get those in the right position where is the garage door how tall is the garage door what's the head height uh, what is the width if this is eight wide and seven tall then you're going to write that on your plan how many feet on this side how many feet on that side it's not always centered um, and then at that point you'd have enough measurements to go into AutoCAD and start drawing uh, you know your, your floor plan okay well we start with the floor plan so that's pretty much it for this video I wanted to explain the process by doing uh, the as built and then in my next video I think I'm gonna take some of these measurements that I drew and I'm gonna start creating this floor plan and I'm gonna do that step-by-step -step, video by video um, and this might be a 10 video series you know I really don't know or maybe it's only a couple I haven't really figured out how far I'm gonna go with it yet but you're gonna need to make accurate plans for the architect that you're working for because they want to know exactly where everything is in order to do the design, you know, of what the homeowner is looking for. Okay. So thank you guys. I appreciate you watching. Um, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully you guys follow this series. Thanks a lot. Gotta catch